I feel it in my data. I see here what it shows. Stats are all around me, and so the knowledge grows. The mood in Tiberet was nervous for quite a few days now. Tiberet was due to deliver its compressors, but there was a shortage of components, so the production slowed down. There was an issue on the supplier's side, which delayed the deliveries last month, and all the later deliveries started to slip since then. The next day the production stopped completely, adding to the already tense climate. Stanislav felt uncomfortable as the news were coming to him, but he was trying to keep his cool. We have done quite a rigorous planning of our inventory. We have finally implemented the one-piece flow to optimize the work-in-process volume, and we place the orders exactly per the lead time. What can possibly go wrong? Well, nothing seems to be wrong except Tiberit is due to deliver, and they have no parts to work with. If the parts will come tomorrow, Tiberit will be able to deliver only 60% of this week's quota, if there will be two extra night shifts. This will cost the company quite some money, and the delayed delivery of the remaining 40% will cost more money on the late delivery fines. Fortunately, the parts came the next day, and with great effort, the deliveries, even delayed, were dispatched. Tiberet could forget about the profits, but at least there were no big losses. Of course, Stanislav was not happy about this, and he also received quite an unpleasant phone call from one of the Tiberet's customers. This raised his concern that despite all the inventory planning and process optimization they have done, there may be troubles. Was this a unique event caused by unpredictable circumstances? Is there a risk that this situation will repeat? I don't want to be in the same situation again. Let's call Yaroslav, just in case. Good morning. Can I work on some reliability problem again? No. We have an inventory issue. Oh. Let's go then. Vice Pythagoras once said, All is number. Count with us, count on us, Diribet. Here we have production plans that comply with the demand. Of course, there is some variation, but look, the weekly average values fit perfectly. We have t-tested them. And we have a one-piece flow for a whole the assembly process. So we know exactly the numbers for our plan. Well, there will always be some risk that the inventory will not cover the production's demand. What you need is to define the level of acceptable risk that this will happen. And now to the one piece flow. It sounds well in theory. You only work with the number of parts you really need Everything is planned to the last screw, and there is a minimal work-in-process capital requirement. But having a one-piece flow in the whole process is extremely sensitive to any distortion. If any part is missing, or if it is found to be out of specification, you have no backup. The whole planning will fall like a house of cards.
Yaroslav looked at the expected demand and the plans. When planning the inventory, the important parameter is not the average, but the quantile corresponding to the acceptable risk. Estimating the average demand is not good enough, because if it decreases, the production's capacity is not utilized, and that's exactly the capacity which is missing when the demand increases. On average, everything may seem to fit, but that's just an illusion. The real world does not wait for averages. The other thing to be considered was the process optimization. The one-piece flow optimization is only good for some parts of the process, like for individual sub-assembly lines. And then we need buffers that themselves are inventories, so that if anything goes wrong, the problem will not affect the whole process. The level of these buffers are individual problems that need to get the same attention as the big supplier inventory storage. And the suppliers are the last piece of the puzzle. It sounds nice to have an on-time delivery, but it either increases the risk or it adds to the cost. Sometimes it is worth it, but not always. Moreover, if even the best companies like Tiberit can sometimes get into trouble like this, the suppliers can get into trouble like this too. If we want to be a stable supplier to our customers, we need to expect some basic level of problems on our supplier's side. All these things put together will give the picture of the demand for the inventory. The demand is variable, while all the components add to this variability. When we estimate this variability, we need to look for the quantiles rather than for the average, as the average represents close to 50% risk. That's clearly too much. If we are ready to accept, let's say, 10% risk, we need to look at the 90th percentile for the correct inventory level over the time. The low levels of risk do not come for free. The lower risk we are willing to accept, the higher will be the capital tied to the inventory. And it will never be a risk-free enterprise anyway. The inventory needs to be considered holistically throughout the entire supply chain. It cannot be optimized for individual level at the factory entry. We need to look both upstream and downstream. Tiberit started to place orders not only per the lead times, but also per the newly developed planning with controlled risk level. The tension decreased, and Tiberit was once again a nice place to work at. Let's hope people will not get too relaxed, for there are more problems to come. <laughs>